everybody, visitors. Good to see everyone here. Thank you for that special music. Thank you, Michael.
slay utterly old and young, both maid and little children and women, but cometh not near any man which upon whom the mark. And begin where? At my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. What does that say to you? Judgment begins where? In the house of God. So, this could be a very safe place to be or a very dangerous place to be, huh? I mean, really, if you, if you read that for what it says, um, let, let, us, let us turn to Romans. Romans chapter 4. of the faith which he had yet being what? Uncircumcised. So how is that possible? That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness be imputed unto them also. What's this talking about? Did Abraham, is, was he the father of who? What? A people? Does a people come out of him? Who are these people? Israelites. Israelites. Yeah. Are we Israelites? Are we Jews? We yeah. are. Absolutely. Spiritual Jews. Let's go to Ephesians. <laughs> According 
to the working of his mighty power, which he, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So Christ is, right there it's said that he's above everything, right? So he's large and in charge, correct? And he is the head, and it says we are to be what? The body. That's who we are. So we're supposed to be, basically, the hands and feet of Jesus. Right? Doing his work. So if we had a report card here in front of us, how well would we be doing? I mean, are, are we advancing... We're standing on the shoulders of giants, people that dug in. Back in 1844, when they when they had this, this great disappointment, what happened? People dug in, right? A little group dug in. The rest of them just kind of <coughs> went away. So this church was birthed out of that, out of that message, right? And I mean, they dug in, and they got great light, great light. And where did we go? How much further did we go? We're just kind of, what are we, stagnant? Where, where are we today? I think the problem is, is the body's not focused on the head. Amen. Because wherever the head goes, the body follows. Ask any wrestler, he'll tell you quick. You know, you take a hold of that head, that body's going to follow. But if the body isn't attached to the head, how can it follow? Maybe the issue is our focus. I just, I, you know, you can look at this world any way you want, but I mean, it's it, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. It's, 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 you know, whatever way you want to look at it right now, it's, it's, it's ugly. But there's great things happening. I mean, here in America, it seems kind of stagnant, but you go around the world, I mean, things are blowing up. Jesus is doing wonderful work. People are being saved every day. They're following Christ, coming to know Him as their personal Savior. Do we have a special message as Adventists? Yes. What is that special message? That Jesus is in the most holy place, right? Doing a special work. And when does that work stop? When what stops going up? When your sin stops going up. When it comes. Turn to um, Ephesians 4. And let us begin in verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You know, it's a lot easier to say amen than it is to die to self. It really is. And I'm not saying that for people who not say amen, okay? Um, I like it when you say amen. Let's skip down to verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are what? Sealed. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed unto the day of redemption. You believe you're sealed? You believe you have the Holy Spirit? 
Amen. You believe the Holy Spirit wants to do a work in this church that is not happening? Amen. Yes. Do you think that's His fault? No. Okay. Let us turn to John. John chapter 6. John 6 and 26. Y'all there? I'm going to start at 25, okay? And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Then Jesus says in 27, he says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father done what? Sealed. Sealed. So how are we sealed? In Christ. Right? Because doesn't God only accept absolute perfection? Amen. Okay? And it's only found where? In Christ, In Christ Jesus. He's our new identity. Exactly. Beautifully said. Say that again. He is our new identity. He is our, our new identity. Yes. He didn't just die for me. He died my death. He didn't just live for me. He lived my life. Do we see that? That's, that? That takes it a step further. It's a little deeper. We want to, we, we, we need to need him. We need to want him like nothing else. That's the way it has to be. That's the way real victory comes. That's the way the Holy Spirit is going to move in a wonderful and amazing way. I do believe that we're not focused where we need to be focused. I think we're happy here. Fat happy, if I might say it. People say, I want Jesus to come, but not today. Right? Do you really want, what, what, do you have anything that you'd rather do than Jesus come today? I mean, other than maybe your children, some of your children that are not where they ought to be. We need to really pray without ceasing. I don't think God just moves haphazardly. I know that God loves to tie his hands behind his back. And he moves when his people pray. That's when he moves. Yeah. In verse 28, it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Does it, does it merely mean to just believe in this guy? Like, yeah, I believe in him. What does it mean? What does it mean to really believe in Jesus? It's life and death. Have you ever bet on anything in your life? <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, it's like putting all your chips in for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if he ain't the one, then, it, it, then I'm done. You follow me? You're sold out, lock, stock, and barrel. You put all the chips on Jesus, so to speak. 
There is no other way, the Bible says. It makes no excuse. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. We're already in John, so let's just go to chapter 7. Uh, let's go to verse 16. Chapter 7 of John, verse 16, and it says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Wow. <clears throat> what does that mean? My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Is Jesus saying here that I'm not speaking of myself? Yeah. And I'm not speaking my own words, but I'm speaking of the words of him who sent me. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? Jesus Christ has all chips cashed in for God the Father. He says, I don't care what you guys do or anything that happens. He is what it's all about. He is who I follow. That's why as a little boy, he could stand in front of these great teachers and he could baffle their minds. Because he was always led by the Holy Spirit. He didn't do any of the miracles in and of himself. And he didn't speak any words in and of himself. If he did, he would have disqualified himself as being your Savior. Amen. Because he's asking you to do what? what he did. Exactly what he did. And if God is asking you to do something... Would he ask you to do something that was impossible? No. He's asking us to overcome the same way he overcame. He is the pattern. I think this is where we fall. And I know it's where I'm, I fall. Because I'm not putting him first as he ought to be first in my life. Because if he was... I wouldn't have any problems. Though I could be on fire, I wouldn't have any problems. Go to verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Have you had a, a time in your experience with God as this has happened to you? Do you want this to continue to happen? Do you want these to be your everyday occurrence? Yes. yes. I do too. <clears throat> so I ask us again, why not? We're putting something ahead. Something. However small and minuscule it might be, we're putting something in front of Jesus. And he, brothers and sisters, will not take the back seat. Amen. He is going to drive, and that's the way it's going to be. Amen. He knows how to drive. Yes, he does know how to drive. Let us turn to Psalm, Psalm 7. Psalm chapter 7. This isn't a real difficult message. It's pretty simple. I'm a pretty simple guy. Don't make me too hard. Psalm 7, verse 9. <coughs> oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just... For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Have you looked up any of these words? You know what the word reign is? Look this up for yourself. Don't take my word for it. <laughs> huh? Yes. The deep part of the mind. The mind that makes people act and move. The emotion part of your mind is where the reins, he's talking about the reins. If, if you want to look the word up, 
the word is the way it's pronounced is Kilia. Kilia. Isn't that something, huh? Kilia. Yeah, it will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I know as a man, it's very difficult for me to sit there, you know, we're using reins, so we're going to use the, the horse and carriage vernacular, if you will. To, for me to sit here in the back seat while somebody else is holding the reins, think about that. But what is God, is, what is God asking us to do? To allow him to have the reins. Amen. If, if he has the reins, could there be any trouble? There, there could be trouble, but what does it matter? What does it matter? Good. You know, Jesus was always full of faith, exactly where he needed to be, and he was never fearful. There's only one time in the Bible that talks about him crying out in his humanness. <laughs> Because he really didn't want to go to the cross. Would you want to go to the cross? He called out to his father, if there be any other way. Nevertheless, what? He still did not take the reins. He's saying, Father, I really do want to here, but didn't. That's, that's amazing to me. You stop and think about the, the ring and tone of Jesus' life all through his life. Never did he touch the reins. There he is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's asking his brothers, his, his, his disciples to pray with him. They're just letting him down. He's by himself sweating drops of blood. Have you ever been that concerned that you sweat drops of blood? That's pretty serious stuff. And in that moment of his life, he says, you know, Father, I really, I really do want to take these reins. I don't want to do this. I, don't, I want to steer away from this. But nevertheless, I will not take the reins. Well, what is our life like? Oh, the ring and tone is, I'm going to hold the reins, right? But here's a moment. Oh, you know what, God? Here, go ahead. Take these reins for a moment. For a moment. Right? Think about it. If we really put him first, he's got to hold the reins. And he's going to take us places we might not think we want to go. Did you hear me? I said in places we might think we don't want to go. But I tell you what. <laughs> If you're in the worst place, listen, think about Paul. He's down there chained in a, in a dungeon of a basement jail in his own feces. Right? And he's singing the praises of God. He wasn't holding the reins. Because no man that holds his own reins can sing like that. It's not possible. Not possible. Psalm 16 and 7. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Do we realize how deep a part of the mind we're talking about here that we're wanting to give God full command of? We're talking about the unconscious mind, the part that really is deep. You follow me? That makes you who you are and what you do, things you don't even realize. God wants control of that. Should we give it to him? Should we allow him to have that? Yes. The Bible teaches very simply, you're not your own. You have a master. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Science is advancing at an alarming rate. What about us, brothers and sisters? What about us? 
Are we advancing? Let's turn to Revelation 17 and 2. 